Hello, hello. Um, welcome to this gap between Christmas and New Year. It's always a funny time, isn't it? You have a few days where it's all go, 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 and then suddenly everything just comes down to real life again, I suppose. I am going to be making some faux airmail vintage envelopes and I am using these leftover envelopes from Christmas cards the ones that um, I was using the Christmas cards so the envelopes are kind of surplus to requirements the wonderful Corey bought me this fantastic stamp set um, I was already trying to think of ways of creating what I'm doing now without this stamp set because at the time I didn't have it and I'm going to do a no stamp version for you guys because I know not everyone has these stamp sets. Um, it's not perfect. You're doing something without products that you've seen other people using. You are never going to be able to recreate that exactly. I could certainly cut a template on my Cricut. Not everyone has a Cricut. So I'm doing this for people who have minimal supplies and we're going to make it very easy. I'm going to do two options. I'm not going to make two options in full, but I'm going to show you two options for our stencil because the stencil is the first thing we are going to make. Now, I'm going to make my stencil using this cheap old packaging plastic. This is what I um, put my December dailies in once I'd cut them all out. So these have been used before. They're not new. And we just need a flat edge. And I am going to start my first template I'm going to make with my cinch. Don't worry if you don't have a cinch. There is another version of the, the stencil. I am using this because I like to be able to see through it as I'm using it. So I'm just going to literally take this and put it into my cinch. This is the square cut cinch. And I have got every other one pulled out. So it's going to miss every other hole. Okay, so let's cut that. I'm going to move that aside. Now you can see a couple of these haven't cut all the way through. So I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and just cut those little bits. I did try this using a poly pocket, you know, one of the little sleeves that you put your paper in. Um, that didn't work at all. Because that one is so bad, that will make an absolutely terrible square. I'm going to grab a piece of masking tape and cover that hole up. I'm now not going to be using that hole. OK, so I've got five holes here that I'm going to use as my stencil. If you do not have a cinch, this is from an Arteza cartridge paper pad. I don't want it this long, so I'm going to cut a section off here. All of this paper will get used, do not worry. And we've got the perforation lines and we've also got way too many holes. Now, to make life simple for myself, I'm going to take a piece of washi tape and just cover up every other hole. OK, now this is a great way to make a stencil for this, but you can't see through it. And it does cause a little bit of a problem if you can't see where on your envelope exactly you're placing your little squares. But, you know, this is an option if you don't have a square cinch. If you've got a planner from maybe last year, you might find you've got a plastic divider in there with square holes. You might be able to use that. That would be a good a good option. Get rid of those little, little bits. Now these paper squares, paper holes, are not perfect, okay? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be. Now I'm gonna just use a piece of cheap masking tape to cover up those perforation lines. And like I said, this is when you're doing something from scratch, 
you're not always going to end up with a perfect result but there is nothing wrong with imperfection so here we go that's our little template using this so i'm just going to grab my first envelope this is actually a good fit it's roughly the length of my envelope now i'm going to line it up but i'm going to leave a tiny sliver of envelope showing above my stencil because i want the color to go around the edge too i'm going to grab my red ink and my dabber and i'm going to start putting this color down so this is the notepad version any notepad with a square hole you're going to be able to do this exact same thing and that is the first piece done now i would then go all the way around this envelope but i'm going to show you now using the plastic version because there are a couple of little extra things that we can show you with this I'm going to line it up again i've got a little piece along the top there take my red ink make sure i go off the edge because i want that ink at the top as well now when you've got this you'll be able to move it across quite easily and add your extra holes now I can see from that one, I've got a tiny bit of plastic still in place. So I'm gonna trim that out. Now I'm gonna turn my envelope around, place my stencil down and go round the rest of this with the red. Oh, be really careful you don't do what I did. Take that off the edge there. okay once you've gone all the way around with your red the good thing about this stencil is you can take some paper and you can rub off that extra ink so you're not wasting all of that ink that was on your stencil i'm just going to give that a wipe now we've got all the red done so now i'm going to go for my blue i've got another dobber here back with my stencil and because this is see-through I can line these up halfway a lot better than I can with the paper version um, the paper version is a little bit hit and miss you can have a rough idea and I'll show you just a moment Right, so we've got a little bit of it bit envelope here and there without a little bit of ink at the edge. So I'm just going to go around that and give that a little bit of ink at the edge with the colour. Okay, grab my paper, rub off that extra ink. That's the envelope we're going to complete, but I'm just going to show you um, how you can get this as good as you can with the blue. So I'm lining up. In between these red squares and I'm just going to slide that up and then go round with this blue and you can see you'll get a very similar effect it just might not be perfect see they're not quite as even but this is absolutely free you don't need anything to do that other than some kind of piece of paper from a notepad it's already looking quite like a vintage airmail envelope it's certainly looking like an airmail envelope it's not the right shape but you know it's got that look to it and that's all we're after so what i'm going to do is take my envelope i had um i printed out a sheet with different typefaces different made up names and addresses in different scrawls um, you could do these at all different sizes. They're completely made up. Let's use this one for this particular envelope. 
Now, I did this because I, my handwriting is terrible. It doesn't look particularly vintage. Um, and I'm sure some of you have the same problem. Either way, write your name and address on now while the envelope is in this state. Because I can't, I have some carbon paper. My writing is absolutely terrible. So I'm going to grab a piece of carbon paper, roughly line up. You can see through this, so that's not too bad. I'm going to put my address roughly in place and I'm going to write over this with my pencil. Rookie error. Um, I actually used this over a piece of tracing paper last time. Now I've actually written on my words. That's fine. Doesn't matter. So there we have our vintage looking address. The next step is to screw this up. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a screw up there. And then I'm going to flatten it out. The next thing I'm going to do is tear the top because this is a used envelope. Now, what I want to do is make sure some areas are above the flap and some are below. So I'm going to go around and just make sure I come down a little bit there and then up and then back to the and then I'm just going to tear. However that goes, however that goes is fine. I'm going to turn my envelope over turn the flap over, grab my glue, and I'm going to glue this part of the flap. I mean, this is a really quick project. Um, it's actually quicker, I think, using this stencil than it is using the stamp. Obviously, the stamp is much more realistic. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to take my, I'm using walnut stain, <laughs> take my dab, and the first thing I'm going to do is go along those tear lines both sides get those inked and then I'm going to ink over the top of that blue and red just to give it a bit more of an aged look and the back all of this ink is where I didn't clean my board as I was using my stencil right now I've got my envelope flat I'm going to take my dobber and very lightly brush it over I'm going to obviously over these crunchy lines and let's do the front just so it picks up some of those little marks and this is why you want to put your address down first because it's harder to put your address down when it's all wrinkled rub that in a bit give that a bit more of an aged look we're not using stamps um as in clear or rubber stamps we're not using those so I've cut out a little square of card because we would have a little line here to put our stamp in it's a uniball eye micro I'm going to hold my little square in place and I'm not going to draw around the whole of this I'm just going to do the sides the top that side oh that's not very straight that side and here because I want a little bit of that to peek out from my stamp here's my stamps just an old vintage stamp you can use any stamp it doesn't have to it could be anything anything you like I'm gonna glue this in and I'm just going to keep a small amount of that black showing so it shows where the stamp should go because you often get that on these old envelopes. The next thing, I've got a clear ruler. And again, I'm using a clear ruler so I can see what I'm doing. I've got my pen. Now, this is something you would see on more modern envelopes. You wouldn't necessarily see this on an older, em older envelope, but I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to, in this bottom left-hand corner, just do a few little lines, a few taller and then some shorter ones and then a taller one. And I'm just butting it against this ruler. So all of the lines stop in the same place. If you miss a gap, you can put a little line in. 
it's looking it's looking pretty good i think got this little scrap piece of cardboard and i'm just going to cut a little wavy line it's not going to be brilliant it's not going to be brilliant let's cut that off about there so we've got this little wavy line template this is where it could go completely wrong i'm gonna put this on to my stamp and i'm just gonna draw along that wavy line move it down and draw again move it down and draw again i think i'll do five five lines <clears throat> There we go. So it covers the stamp and the envelope. The ones that I made using the Tim Holtz stamp set were, I mean, they're not dissimilar. They're not dissimilar. And I did a couple of smaller ones too. They're all open because if we're using them in junk journals, we'd usually use an open envelope. So that is our... DIY faux vintage airmail envelope used. It certainly looks a million miles away from where it started. Plain old white Christmas card envelope. Well, there you go. That's it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. Fairly quick. You could, you could make loads of these. Um, take care. I will see you all really soon. Bye.